Good evening and welcome from Phil Waybright Gymnasium at Argus High School and tonight's non-conference matchup between your Argus Dragons and the visiting Winnemac Warriors girls basketball. So we're going to do JV first here. We're just getting underway. It's only going to be two quarters of JV, so we're going to have a half of a JV game and then we'll have the varsity game for you following that. So... Val will be here. Um, Phil is going to be running camera for us tonight. Dylan Kindig going to be calling the game for you when he gets a chance. He's just finishing up uh, practice, so uh, he's going to be probably joining us then when we get into the varsity contest. So, uh, hey, Richie. So uh, we'll be uh, looking forward to that. It's uh, you know pretty exciting. He's he's wanting to uh, kind of do this as. Uh, a career so we're excited to have Dylan come in and pick up the the game for us here when we get going with the varsity game and so the rosters here on the uh, JV so we got Alicia Sarver, Ava Stackhouse, Morgan Barkas, Samantha Redinger and Bailey Binkley gonna be the starters for the Dragons Lauren Bruce, Mershai Lamer, number 14, sorry, Kyra Wolford, number 20, Lily Bennett. Sorry about that, Phil's getting a hot dog. And who did I miss? Number 12, O'Connor. And that's going to be a good bucket and a foul. Free throw off the mark. Sarver comes away with it. For three, good. Samantha Redinger gets the Dragons on the board with the three-pointer. Amanda Davis is the JV coach for the Argus Dragons. Stephanie Smith, the coach for the Winnemac Warriors. That one rims in and out, and Binkley able to come up with the rebound. Nice give and go, shot off the mark, rebound to O'Connor, and jump ball called. That will be Argus ball. So I wonder how they do this. I haven't really been involved with the, the half of the JV game with those switch ends in between quarters, kind of use it like a, a half instead of a quarter, or if they you know, work it like it's the first and second quarter. I guess we'll find out here, won't we? Nice drive to the bucket by Redinger. Shot off the mark. Rebound to the Warriors, Lily Bennett, and she's going to be fouled. It's going to be a foul on... was Barkas picking up the foul. Sorry, white 20. Oh, nice little move. That one just rims out for Bennett. Dragons come away with the rebound. Redinger gets around her man and puts it in for two. She's got five, and the lead is 5-2 for the Dragons.
And another jump ball. That will be Winnemac on the jump. Two more. Seven two lead here for the Dragons. Binkley playing some tight defense on Lamer. Bucket. I believe that was Bruce with the bucket for Winnemac. Makes it 7 4. Renninger goes inside and she'll be fouled. Go to the line shooting two. Foul is going to be on number 42. Do I have a 42 listed? So. Redinger puts in the first. Second free throw off the front iron for Redinger, and the rebound comes out to O'Connor. 2.38 to go here in the first quarter. And a travel called on the Warriors. And a timeout called by the Dragons. Full timeout. We'll take a break and be back here with more from Phil Waybright Gymnasium in just a moment. I'm back here at Argus High School. Phil Waybright Gymnasium out of the Dragons timeout. Dragons lead the Winnemac Warriors 8-4 here in the JV game. We're going to play two quarters here this evening for JV, followed by the varsity contest. And double dribble called. Give the ball back over to the Warriors. So something new here, I, I can see back on the on the wall there to our left. You can't really see it in the picture, but they got the Hoosier Plains Conference up on the board on the wall. Newly formed, I think last year was the first year for the conference. Sarver rims out, rebound to Bennett. It's going to be off of the Warriors.
Minkley, little runner in the lane from about eight feet. Good. For the junior, Bailey Binkley. Transfer from Culver. And a blocking foul called on Holohan. 5-5 five, five, sophomore for the Warriors. Stackhouse trying to uh, get that ball and she's going to be fouled. It's going to be on Holohan, her second, team's third, under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Oh, knocked out of bounds, it'll stay Argus ball. Gonna be a shooting foul. We're gonna call that on Lily Bennett. That's gonna send Redinger to the line shooting two for the Dragons. First free throw is off for the sophomore. Second one is in. Seven point lead, 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And a travel call on the Warriors. Was it still snowing, Phil? Boy, it was when I got here. Done snow, and that's good. It's a little too early for me. I mean, it's it is mid-November, so it's not too early, but it is. Barkus for three off the back iron. Stackhouse, and it's going to be off of Winamax. So good hustle there by the freshman Stackhouse. The runner, and that'll do it for the first quarter. The Dragons lead 11-4 after one. Here in the JV contest, we'll take a break and come back with second quarter or second half. I don't know what they want to call it with this, but uh, we're only going to play two quarters, so we'll be back with that quarter here in just a moment on RTC TV4. <laughs> And back here at Phil Waybright Gymnasium after one quarter, one half, whatever you want to call it here, because we're only playing two quarters of the JV contest. Dragons lead 11-4 over the Winnemac Warriors. Dylan Kindig, Val T will be joining us for the varsity contest. Looking forward to that one. Should be a, a really good game, probably similar to the, what the Dragons had just last Tuesday at... Um, Triton, Winnemac, very similar in styles to the Triton Trojans. They like to play some really good defense and, and some tough man-to-man -to -man defense. They'll try and uh, bog you down if they can. And So really looking forward to, uh, to that. It's a big non-conference game here early in the season for both teams to kind of gauge where they are, both both teams pretty similar in, in size with schools and everything. Dragons have the ball here to start the second quarter. And they did switch in, so that answers that question. 
And Barkas is going to foul number 12, Kaylin O'Connor, sending her to the free throw line, shooting two. So we're just going to call it the second half, I guess, even though there's only one half. Sarver just inside the three-point line, off the mark. If you want to, you want to grab a headset? Go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. And Dylan Kindig joins us here on the broadcast. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. So they're just playing a half. Uh, yeah. We're in the second half of uh, or second quarter, whatever you want to call it, but the uh, final quarter JV here. You know, the, the JV girls work hard, too. I like to, you know, if I get here early enough, I like to get that and, and put it in and, and get that on tape yeah. as well. And yeah. I, I know you were at practice. Your dad texted me and such. And So here's my question. You guys uh, are in your first full week, right? Yes, sir. Yep. How, how's that going? New uh, coach? It's, it's going pretty well. I mean, we're at a little – I mean, things are obviously changing around us, so we got to get used to that. But overall, I think we're catching on pretty quick. And I think I think it'll be a pretty promising year, honestly. Yeah. Well, with the, with the group of seniors that you guys have, yeah. and, you know, you throw J.J. into that mix, I mean, it, it should be a, a really fun year. Yeah, it really would. Yeah. It really should. So we're we're looking forward to it. I, I you know you always wonder with a with a new coach, and this is his first uh, full uh, head coach job, yeah, right? It so, is. I mean, he's pretty young, not too much older than you guys are. Not, is he? Yeah. But yeah, it'll definitely be interesting with just all the different things. Just because I mean, it's just a totally different way we're playing now. Mm -hmm. Like before with Coach Mawson. Much respect to Coach Mawson for coaching here. And with us, he taught me a lot. He taught yeah. everyone a lot here. But we're, like, he always kind of slowed the game down for us, let it progress for us. And this right. way, I think it'll be, like, Probably play a better little more up-tempo. Yeah, yeah. It, it's okay to see say it. See it faster, I mean, yeah. You know, Coach Mawson would yeah, agree. I, know, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, his style, and that's the way he's, you know, even back in the day, you know, when, when I was playing in high school and he was yeah. coaching over John Glenn, I mean, that was just the style. And, that's, yeah. you know, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. It just that's going to be a different style now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So timeout here with 3.51 to go. The Dragons holding on to a uh, three-point lead. They were up, uh, gosh, 10-4 and uh, four straight. Uh, four to one run here by Winnemac and has cut it to three. So... I'm really looking forward to this varsity contest. I haven't yeah. got a chance to see the Dragons in person this year. Uh, I did watch quite a bit of uh, the first game that uh, they played here with Caston. Yeah. Caston's a tough way to, I mean, didn't used to be, but Caston this year, last year, tough team to start with. I mean, they're just really, really aggressive and 
uh, didn't go uh, the Dragons' way, but then they've come back and, and had a couple of uh, big wins. They they beat Bethany Christian. And they just beat Triton yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah, which on was Tuesday at win. Triton. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do. This, you know, Coach Croft, if, if you've not watched Winnemac uh, Warriors uh, girls basketball, they play defense. I okay. mean, it doesn't matter who they've got on the floor. They're going to be slogging it and playing some good defense. Yeah. So we'll – We'll see what the uh, what the attack can do. You know, the neat thing out of that Triton game, you know, Bella Stoltz had 13. She mm -hmm. was a leading scorer. So if she can get going along with Lizzie and then you can get Emma uh, Dunlap going as well, and then, you know, Samantha Redinger is, is dangerous. Uh, you yeah, know, just she's dangerous sophomore. anywhere on the floor. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. But, yeah, hopefully Bella Stoltz, she can – Give some more out of that second half. Kind of struggled in the first half against Triton, only getting the two points, and then the 11 in the second half. So hopefully she can carry some of that momentum from more of the second half. Right. Carry that over into the uh, the next game would be nice. Some good defense uh, there by Barkus, and they're going to call like a like they got foul. on the hand, yeah. Yeah. Did a really good job, just uh, a little bit too much, I guess. I think if she just broke after the ball a little sooner, because you saw the bobble there, I think mm -hmm. if, she just, if she just went a little sooner, she would have had possession. Yeah. So, Coach, uh, Jennings kind of struggling a little bit with some numbers this year. Uh, yeah. They're just playing two quarters. I guess there's only... 11 players for the Dragons, so that makes it a little difficult. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he's got a nice mix out here. And some of these girls, it's it's nice to at least get them a couple quarters because, you know, some of these girls really need that time. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a big jump to go from junior high straight into a varsity. I mean, and it doesn't do them any good to go and sit on the bench. Yeah, right you away. Know, so this, yeah. Is, this is good that they can at least get them a, a couple quarters and some – some playing action. Mm -hmm. So Val's going to be here too. So you guys, okay. I'm going to kind of let you guys call the call the game. So okay. you, you get to learn from the from the legend, from the master. Yeah. yeah, the legend. I was really surprised. You know, at first when when I started calling games with Val how good he was, like, right out of the gate. Because, yeah. you know, he'd worked at the paper for so long, and mm -hmm. nobody really, you know, you didn't hear him talking that much. You know, you just read what he wrote, and you loved the, the articles and everything. But, yeah. Uh, you know, he's just, he's just, he's good. He really just knows how to present. <laughs> he does. And, you know, he's got a mind like a steel trap. That helps, too, because everything just comes right off the top. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm sitting here looking for notes. I'm like, you know. Where's where's this? What are you talking about? And he just rattles things off, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I quit trying. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even try and keep up with him. One out of two for Riv, Rivero. Rivero. So you guys have Bremen, right? Your first game? Yes, at Bremen to start. You're at Bremen this year. So yep. that's always an interesting game because, you know, you never really know, obviously, first game. But Bremen, bigger school, mm -hmm. you know, so sometimes they have some, some bigger kids and not to mention a, a football playing school. So yeah, sometimes they have, you know, that, that with you guys, you know, there's – Obviously, you guys have played soccer for so long. Oh, right off the back there, that's an old Courtney Dunlap move by Stackhouse. Not able to put it in, but sometimes you guys go up against these schools that play football, and they're they're a little a little more uh, physical. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, seeing seeing the Bremen team, we saw a few of them in soccer last year. But so we already kind of have that kind of. I don't want to say rivalry, but, like, we still have – there's a little bit of tension there just from soccer season and the way we would just go at it then. Uh-huh. And so, I I mean, I like playing physical. It, it, it gets fun. Right. It really does. Right. And I really hope that it's like that come the Bremen game. Right. And I didn't mean to sound like the, you guys can't play physical, but, it, you know, those, those football playing schools, they, yeah. they really hit the weight room a lot. Mm -hmm. and,
So what was uh, what was two A like? That was two uh, A. It was it was interesting. I we didn't really see much of an impact of it until. Um, well, I don't want to say that because I feel like teams definitely like went at us harder uh-huh. because just because we moved up and we hit, we just really had a target on our backs the whole season. But we didn't really see anything different until the tur- the tournament came when, right. of course, we saw Tippy Valley in a sectional. We've never seen that. I mean, Tippy Valley's still a newer program, right? And uh, yeah, we never seen them in a tournament. And then, of course, playing Fort Wayne Canterbury. That was definitely new. Playing a top team in any class in the state, but you guys, and you guys held I mean, them scoreless yeah. through regulation, two overtimes, and then lost in a shootout. But I mean, much respect to them and Kurt. Kurt couldn't do some anything about some of those just absolute rockets mm-hmm. at the net. But I well, mean, yeah, we fought with them the best we could, and I, I'm not mad about that loss. And Val was saying their keeper is pretty much a, a D1, uh, high D1. Yeah, prospect. pretty much. Yeah. Crazy athletic, yeah. So I was, I was, you know, when I when I heard the score and, and Val was telling me about the game, man, that was just that was really impressive yeah. because you, you wondered going into it, you know, how's this going to go? Number one team in two A at their place, and mm-hmm. that was that was a pretty good way to go out. I mean, obviously, you guys would have went wanted to probably preferred to go out with a, a state championship, obviously, yeah. but uh, you know, no. Uh, Nothing to hang your heads over. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I'm definitely not upset about that loss, mm-hmm. the way we fought with them the entire time. I mean, no one thought we would. Right. And that was the best part that we did. Good. They extended that lead a little bit. They got a little more space to work with with a minute left. Still no lead is safe, but, I mean, it's better than how it was before with them. You said they were leading, what, 10-2 to two earlier and then 10-4. 10-4, yeah. okay. So six point, yeah, so they're up to eight. So Extended a little bit. It's yep. better late yep. in games. You know, JV is always just... You know, win or lose is not as critical in JV. It's a matter of are you getting better. Yeah, definitely. And especially when you're playing two quarters. And, you know, sometimes the the game can get a little rough, too, if you're only playing two quarters because mm-hmm. the girl's like, hey, I got five fouls to burn, you know. And, yeah. But uh, they haven't been seemingly doing that too bad here. It's going to say no one, only one team in bonus so far. Mm-hmm. I mean, with that many fouls to give, I'm, I'm – I am kind of surprised they're not taking advantage of that. Yeah. Way to draw the contact there. Morgan's going to be fun to watch. You know, I had her for three years in elementary school. Yeah. And, you know, she's she's got a really nice jump shot and – uh, she handled the ball really well. And she's going to, you know, develop into a, uh, a nice player here for yeah. the Dragons. And she's been getting some solid minutes hey. off of the bench in varsity games Has too. She? Good. Yeah, good. Like I think she played. It wasn't as much as the casting game. She played quite a bit in casting. In the like, it was later. Mm-hmm. But I mean, she still had like the last almost. The whole last quarter she was in. Yeah. And then the Triton game she didn't have as much. But that was just because the game was a little closer. And a freshman being in that situation, you don't quite want to put them in that situation yet as a coach. Right. But, yeah, she's been getting some solid minutes off the bench for varsity, too. So, if she like, if they keep just doing that, then I think she'll progress all right. Yep.
Next is another sophomore, Maggie Smith. Now it's a senior, Kingsley Croft. Another senior, number 10, Ella Gearhart, who actually used to go to Argus back in elementary school. Yes, they did, yep. Her sister graduated and, last year, yep. Okay, and then another senior, number 14, Kaya Campbell. And now for the hosting Lady Dragons, their lineup. First, it's going to be a sophomore, number 10, Samantha Redinger. Next is a junior, number 14, Bella Stoltz. Then running the points, number 20, another junior, Emma Dunlap. Senior, number 34, Sophie Bollenbacher. And Manning the Middles, number 40, another senior, Lizzie Edmonds. Lizzie, a uh, Holy Cross College commit. I got to see uh, her future coach, Tom Robbins, up in the stands tonight watching. So, Ooh, Holy Cross has a history of taking some of Argus girls basketball players I mean, yeah. with Caleb Barlow, I believe, and yeah. Anna, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember if Anna played. She might have went there for a year, okay. but I don't remember. But I she... remember Kaylin went there and played. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kaylin and I think played all four. Maybe yeah. Anna did too. I don't remember exactly, but uh, I've slept. <laughs> slept since I'm then. old and I've slept. <laughs> and Edmonds is going to win the tip to Dunlap. She'll bring it across half court. We've seen a lot of one thing we've seen last year and this year when me and my dad were doing this we noticed i didn't realize how much zone was played last yeah. season a two three yeah not gonna probably see a whole lot of that out of winnemac tonight unless they've changed their philosophy but uh yeah nice steal right out of the gate by the warriors and i mean winnemac they've if the girls defense is anything like the boys defense it's going to be extremely hard working extremely strict not letting much of the paint you know really physical team just everywhere on the floor. Yeah. So now here's Croft. She'll give it to Campbell. You know, one thing that's been um, talked about in high school basketball is a potential shot clock. Uh -huh. Which, I mean, I'm personally not against it. It really takes, I mean, I see people going either way with it, but it really takes away that whole three minutes, like the last three minutes of just standing and right. nothing happening. Just speeding up the game, I think, will just, it would make it a little more interesting. Yeah, Val was talking the uh, Tip View Valley. There's Argus gets on the board first with Lizzie Edmonds putting it in. Uh, Val was talking that uh, Valley was at the Academy the other night. And yeah. There was a two minute possession by the Academy. I mean, yeah, it's... And there's a basket by Piper Link to tie it early. Edmonds with it, high elbow, gives off to Redinger. Piper Link is intriguing to me. She had a uh, really good year last year on the JV. Okay. You know, looking to see as, as she goes into her sophomore year, you know, what, what can she contribute? And you know, right out of the gate, she puts them yeah. uh, on the board, so. And it's a really, it really is not an easy transition between JV and varsity because, I mean, going into JV, I mean, you're just coming out of middle school. It's obviously slower. You're going to JV, you're playing maybe even juniors, depending on what level they can play at. And then even more at the varsity level, it's just quicker, way more physical. It's just a whole different game. Nice move there, Bella Stoltz. So kind of like what you said there, she, she kind of takes off where she left off there against Triton. That one short from three. Yeah, that's a potent combination if Bella and both uh, her and Liz uh, Lizzie get going. Yeah. Now they probably don't want to both be posting up. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> they were like side by side right there. Probably don't want to do that. Stoltz gives off to Redinger inside, short. And there's going to be a jump ball into the basket.
But yeah, the offense definitely, as we've seen this year, runs through Emma Dunlap and Edmonds. Mm -hmm. And that was a nice pass there by Stoltz into Redinger. She yeah. just wasn't able to put it put it away. Tipped away by Sophie. They call a foul. The first foul of the game. It's going to be on Bolenbacher. Thank Phil Dean for coming in, running the camera for us tonight. He always does a great job on the camera. Three from Maggie Smith, no good. And here's Bowenbacher up the right sideline, gives it to him. Nice. Oh, nice pass to Redinger inside for the easy basket. That's two really good passes from Stoltz to Redinger. Really like uh, Bella's court vision. Yeah. Pull up three, got nothing on it. That's Kingsley Croft. Uh, she's she's a really good shooter. You don't normally see that from her. So I, it kind of looked like maybe she didn't have her feet set underneath her. They were a little. Uh, I was gonna say the shot looked a little shaky and yeah. forced. Yeah, they were a little. Uh, didn't really get her feet square. I guess you'd say. I mean, even the best shooters still airball shot every once in a while. I oh, mean, yeah. Steph Curry's still not perfect. So that one pass a little over Stoltz's head. It's going to be Winnemac possession. And the substitution, Link is going to come out for Healy Adinger. An early pressure that could that could cause some. Oh, Dunlap to steal, fast break, and easy basket for two. And Winamax going to call an early timeout. Eight two Dragons. Yeah, an early pressure. You know, with a team that's kind of short staffed after coming off a varsity game. You know, only eleven girls on the team. It can cause a little bit of concern just energy wise of going late into the game, but. All right, that was a full, right? I think, yeah, it yeah, was. They're set. Yep. Yep. They're so down. we'll take a quick break and be back here with more from Philway Bright Gymnasium. Right, welcome back here. 3.52 to go in the first quarter. Been all dragons so far, Dylan. 8-2. So far, yeah. They've looked really good. Their pressure has been uh, turning the ball over quite a bit for Winnemac, and, and they've been getting some pretty easy looks. You saw Dunlap with a nice uh, layup there off of the steal. And we've seen some pretty good court vision as well. Two good passes. One of them couldn't convert, but Stoltz on the last one to Redinger did convert. Trying to figure out what kind of a uh, full court pressure. It looked like a 1-3-1 one, one kind of full court thing there. and They're morphing back into uh, a little man-to-man, -man, it looks like. They're definitely slowing things down, though, which is what they want to do. Right. Tight coverage, Stoltz there. Uh, Redinger might have given her a little too much space, but that one's short iron. Redinger, open three, no good, runs out. And now that time for Redinger. Man, those are the worst, too, because you think it hits that part of the rim, it's just going to slide. It doesn't. It's yeah. so frustrating. I think it's that rim right there, because I can remember that doing that quite a bit. Croft three-pointer off the mark. And Stoltz is going to draw a foul there. It's first foul for Kai Campbell. As Carly Miller is going to check in for Sophie Bolenbacher. Here's Miller on the wing. She's pressured tight. It's going to be a travel. Picked up a pivot foot. So Campbell's going to bring it up for the Warriors. Here's Croft. She takes it to the basket. 
Gives it off. That one's going to be out of bounds on Adinger. The Dragons will have the ball back. That was a nice cut by Haley, but just not able to, to get a clean pass into her. Redinger drives baseline, goes up against two defenders, can't get it to go. Stoltz, good hands there, almost broke a three. Miller steps in the way, there's no foul. Wow. Good defensive play by the Dragons there, way to stay straight up. Stoltz slows it down, finds Redinger, they're going to try to set up an offense now. Edmonds, top of the key, takes a dribble move, frees some space, finds Stoltz. Dunlap drives middle, finds Redinger, looked for the shot, didn't take it. Good possession by the Dragons, moving the ball around. Here's Dunlap. <laughs> yeah, good ball movement, stretching this possession. Edmonds goes baseline, puts it up, no good. Tries getting it back. It's going to be Dragon's ball into the basket. I like that move by Lizzie. She was able to uh, get back and give herself a little better angle, but yep. it was good defense there by Winnemac as well. It was. That double came in, just a little too much pressure for her. Piper Link going to check back into the game. Going to give Kaya Campbell a uh, break. Had a little bit of a delay there, tying a shoot. You know, we counted those last year, actually, for games. Me and my dad would, so <laughs> there's number shoot one. Tie, there's number one. Delays. <laughs> Here's Dunlap on the wing, gives to Edmonds, looking around. Green by Stultz, she'll go baseline, spin, broken free. Good defense there by Gearhart. Oh, that's a travel, yeah. And they're going to, yep. Piper saw the uh, wide open lane right there, and her eyes got really big, but uh, unfortunately, the foot It's just when your feet move before. a little faster than yeah. your mind, yep. yep. Good cut by Miller. Defender was just a little too close to her. Baseline drive, pull up jumper, Stultz, no good. Boy, that was a and quick. there's Redinger fighting for the rebound, gets a jump ball. That was a quick first step there by Stoltz. Looks like someone caught an elbow underneath. Yeah, Samantha was maybe a little after the whistle, still going, trying to get that ball free. Miller, corner three, no good, short. Croft, stolen by Stoltz, oh, stepped on the line, just, just barely. Out the sole of her shoe got the line, I think. Seven point one, just two points here in the first quarter so far for the Warriors. Drives middle, nothing there. Shot, no good. Last second attempt, no good as well off the backboard. And at the end of one, it's the Dragons eight and the Warriors two. We got a foul. Oh, there is a foul. Okay. Yeah, called, I didn't they know they called the, that. They blew the whistle there. Adager's going to get some free throws. <laughs> Apparently the cheerleaders yep. didn't know there was either. First one short. Second one's good. So correction now, eight to three at the yeah. end of the first. All right, we'll take a break and come back with the second quarter here from Phil Waybright Gymnasium in just a moment on RTC TV4. 
All right, welcome back here, Phil Waybright, Gymnasium after one. The Dragons lead the Winnipeg Warriors 8-3 as we move into second quarter action. And Dylan, the, the Dragons started off, you know, pretty hot there at the beginning. That's six quick points, but only two in the last probably four minutes of the quarter. Yeah, I, I really, I mean, their vision has still been pretty good. I feel like Winamax's hands have gotten a little better as the game's gone. A little more steals later in the first quarter. A little more just aggressiveness on defense. Really kind of stifling them after the hot first part of that quarter. Yeah. The Warrior ball here to start the second. And it looks like Winamax last time out, they beat Westville by nine. And it, it appears to me Gearhart had a game to remember this season, dropping 16. Yeah. I, was, I didn't know about their first two games. So, yeah, seeing that, I mean, that gives a good matchup to Lizzie, really. Right. Good efficient scorer on a good interior defender. Like, it, it's really fun to watch. Yeah. Dragons come back with the ball after the turnover. Staltz gives to Dunlap. Liz trying to get position. She'll drive baseline on Gerhardt. Spin move, good move, and one. Got it to go. See there, take another look at that. That was a nice power that move really there was. by Lizzie. I'm sure Coach Robbins up there probably really appreciated that one. Where's he at? I, I haven't seen him. So right there on the steps, right at the top of the okay. railing in the black. Okay. I've got to know him pretty well over the years. He was the Ancilla girls coach. Okay. Uh, when Macy was a junior and he was recruiting her. Mm -hmm. So I got to know him pretty well with that. And then he lives in uh, Peru. Yeah. And his daughter is a year younger than McKenna. So they would face each other in AAU stuff. Yeah. And, uh, school ball quite a bit. Good tip there by Dunlap with the steal. He's real. He, I mean, he got a really nice recruiting class in this year's class of the freshmen. Okay. And then for next year with Lizzie and, and I don't know all the girls, but he's just been really getting some yeah. nice classes over Because I know he came here a few times last season and other schools to watch us too. He was, I remember seeing him talking to like Maddie Vanderweel and Sydney mm -hmm. Shepard. Yeah. And Lizzie, of course, already scouting her early. Stoltz there got a uh, little soccer skills must have been her leg. They didn't call a kick, but she uh, was able to deflect it to herself. Staltz, that's a three. No good. Back iron. Lays the rebound. Puts it back up. Too strong. That one's blocked. And it'll be Dragon's ball under the basket. You can see that height and uh, ability there by Edmonds. Just able to uh, out jump the Warriors to get a couple extra opportunities for the Dragons. Miller just inside the line. Short on it. Good block out by Gearhart. She was not going to let Edmonds get another offensive board. And that's one thing Lizzie's really good at is fighting for rebounds, especially on the offensive end. Made a lot of second chance opportunities last season. And continuing that this year. Especially against a very good sophomore in uh, Beers from yes, Triton. Triton, yeah. Triton has some, some nice players. That was a big win. I was impressed yeah. with that because I... I did not, and not only do they have some good players, but at Triton is very tough yeah. place to play. You know that as well as anybody. Yes. Especially, like everyone shows up for everything at Triton. <laughs> they do. It's it's they hard really to play. It really is hard to play that. I'm I'm interested to see because their boys team was just really exciting to watch last year, and I yeah. think they pretty much have everybody back. Yeah, they had a lot returning too. Yeah. yeah. So. That's going to be interesting. 
Good pass up ahead. That one's Campbell. Inside to Stoltz, bobbles it a little bit, kicks out Dunlap, shot fake, drives to her right. Got it! What a finish through contact. Oh, almost picked yeah. it up. Good pressure by the Dragons. Ah, uh, oh, that was, looked like she yeah. walked a little bit there. Got a second chance, but couldn't convert. That, that was what I call a Scooby-Doo start. <laughs> Just kind of moves the feet a little bit more. Yeah. Jump ball, it should stay Dragons if my yeah, possession arrow's right. Good fight for that one between Croft and Stoltz. Yeah. Went a little after the whistle still, but. So Bullenbacher's going to come in, as is uh, number 22. That's, uh, oh yeah, Ali Zom. I couldn't recognize her from the back. Now I see her. See, it's a fun thing to do. Carly was taking the ball out behind the, under the basket, and her defender had her back to her. So yeah. it's just, just bounce it off her back and then just get a shot right there. She won't expect it. That, that move was made famous by Courtney Dunlap several years ago. Nice. She right. did that a lot. Miller, top of the key three, got it. Gives the Dragons a 10 point lead. And that's gonna be off of Zom. Take a look at that three there by Miller. Nice ball movement. Good Got screen her to set her up. up. Yeah. Inbound to Croft, Dunlap guarding. Tipped away by Bullenbacher. Zom coming off a almost season long in like season long injury last year in her hip. Glad to see her back out. Yeah, it really is nice to see her back. Campbell drives to her right. Good. Well, that was just too easy. Yeah. The rotation didn't come from the other side, just opened that lane right up. Here's Zom to Dunlap. Stoltz on the wing looking. Here's Bollenbacher, gives it out to Zom. Dunlap, wing three, short. Again, though, that was nice ball movement by the Dragons. Yeah. Oh, they're going to call an offensive on Gearhart. So that will be her first, team's third. And Stoltz and Redinger are going to check back in. For Zom and Miller. <laughs> 229 to go here in the first half. 15-7, Dragons with the lead. Redinger goes to her left, gives to Stoltz, top of the key. Bollenbacher goes to her left. Defensive foul. That one's going to be on Croft. Edmonds had to go to the top shelf for that pass. Edmonds baseline jumper. Got it. Dragons now with a double-digit lead back to 10, 17-7. And a kick there by Dunlap. Pretty clean game so far, though, other than 
the last, I guess, minute with that offensive foul and the last foul that just that reach, but pretty clean so far with six total fouls. Yep. Ten point lead for the Dragons. That's a little bigger lead than, than it sounds like with the, you know, Winamax not got the greatest offensive team this year, so 10 point lead is, is actually a little bigger than it sounds. Yeah. I think even in that win against Westfield, they only had 30, what did you say? 30, 37 or 37. 37 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so I mean, not a huge offensive output. Reading her for three, no good. Dragons still only won three point field goal tonight. That was Carly Miller. I like that uh, Redinger keeps shooting that. Yeah. She, she can hit those shots, and once she gets in dialed in, she can hit them in a hurry. Good screen to three up Croft. Kind of get it to go. Strong rebound. And a reach in by Edmonds. You know, Haley Adinger is a junior. Her cousin plays at Pioneer. I mean, okay. just really big-bodied, strong kids. I mean, a lot of good size. And, oh, they're going to call foul. I think she was clean up top, but she had her left arm okay. uh, on her back, it looked like, what they're going to call that with. So that'll send Gerhardt to the line for two. That's the first on uh, Lizzie. Your heart trains the first one. And it looks like Croft's going to come out. Piper Link checked in for it. Rattles in the second. And then here come the Dragons with 45 left. I think that's the difference between those ends. That end, you can rattle them in like that. That end, that probably not so much. Back out. Yep. It's it's weird here. Ooh. Is it just me or look like she switched pivot feet? It did a little bit, yeah. but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything this time. Yeah. It's only a it's only a travel if the guy with the whistle blows it, right? That's right. Dunlap, or Edmonds drives baseline, finds Dunlap, Redinger, Staltz, good ball movement by the Dragons. Oh, nice. Inside to Staltz, good look. That was a really nice pass, nice cut by Staltz. There's a steal by Dunlap. Edmonds got it. Just too much, uh, too long after the clock there. Take a look good at defensive that. effort, though. Take a look at that last one. Yep, right back. And it was great clock management as well to lead up to that. There was 45 seconds to start that possession, and they worked it down to five left. Dragons lead 10 here at the half, 19-9. We'll take a break. Val's here. will join us as we start with the second half, and we'll be back here in just a moment. Okay, here we go. Third quarter getting set to go. I'm going to leave uh, Dylan and Val here to take over for you as we get going with the third quarter. So Winamax is going to start with the ball now. Gearhart to inbound. And early struggle. Just struggling to catch the ball early. In the second half. That one foul looks like it's reached over his shoulder. It's going to be on Stoltz. First of the half for the Dragons. First one from Croft is good. Second one's no good. Stultz the rebound to Dunlap to bring it up. 
Dragons have had some pretty good ball movement tonight. Really trying to drag out possessions, take as much of the clock as they can, really minimize Winamax possession. It's Croft looks for a shot. Link takes it up, no good. And it's a fight between Bowenbacher and Campbell for the ball into the basket. It's gonna be a jump ball, Dragons get it. Coach Croft has got to like this shot selection the first two possessions. They've gotten it pretty close to the basket. Nice shot by Campbell there to fight over the screen. Stalton, or Edmonds inside, puts up the hook. Got it. Got a good roll. That'll put the lead in double digits again. Good pass, Got, drew the foul. That's gonna send Link to the line. And that one's on Bowenbacher, team second, her second, and an early second half timeout. Who took that? I didn't see. I think. Is that Argus? I think Argus took that one so for that 30. A, that was a 30. So yeah. I think I was actually Stoltz that picked up that foul there, Dylan. Who did I say? You said I thought it said 30, 34. Yeah. My bad. Yep. So that's her second. She's picked up two quick ones here in the second or third quarter. So the road's still, still snowing? Getting a little better. Yeah. I got about halfway from Rochester to Argus, and it, it started snowing pretty good. I'm like, I'm not ready for this. I know it's, you know, mid-November already, but I'm still not ready for this. Link's first one's good. Second one off the back iron. And here's Dunlap. Gives the ball and Bogger. She'll go to her right a little bit. Good pass by Edmonds. Finds Redinger. Draws the contact. She'll go to the strike. Redinger's first is good. Second one's good as well. And that one's tipped by Edmonds. That'll go out of the baseline. Good pressure from the Dragons so far, really trying to make these passes difficult for the Warriors. When your post player can move like that. Especially with the length she has. Yeah. Here's Link, got it. But that's the price you pay if your opponent beats your press. Yeah. Then Lizzie isn't there to rim protect. That one's tipped. Bollenbacher still comes away with it, but it's a jump ball between her and Croft. And Winamax going to get possession this time. Now for Bollenbacher, it's Miller coming in for her. Here's Campbell, Redinger defending. Give to Croft, fake, fake handoff, draws a foul. Croft will go to the line for another two. That's gonna be the Dragons third of the half. I think Redinger had a chance to draw a charge there.
Croft gets the first one on a good roll. Croft seconds also good, but she went over the line. It's not going to count. High pressure, already picked up her dribble, but there's a foul. Hmm. Contact on the arm. That's three on Kingsley, and that's not, I don't know if you'd say she's in foul trouble, but a little bit concerning, she's gonna have to watch it. Yeah. Good pass by Miller, good spot for that. Edmonds couldn't handle it though. And Winamax is going to go the other way. Double dribble. Once again, it's just another one of those things. Your body moves a little faster than your mind. Yeah. Give to Edmonds on the inbound. Baseline cut Miller. And rebound Redinger for the basket. Link the give to Smith. Nothing good doing with it. Here's Link for three. No good. Fights for a rebound inside. So and offensive okay. rebound. Okay. Offensive rebound for Redinger or assist for Miller. Uh, um, offensive rebound for Redinger. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you'll be running down the floor saying, yeah, good pass, good pass. Yeah. 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 And it didn't hit the rim, so. Dunlap, Smith, and Redding are with it now. Edmonds, turnaround jumper, got it from about 16. That's where uh, Redding is so dangerous, that turnaround jumper. Who's going who's gonna to come out there and be able to guard that? Yeah, you can tell Lizzie spent a lot of time in the gym working on that yeah. shot. Gerhard thought about it. She'll drive to the middle. Questionable travel there. Good defense by Stoltz. Edmonds gets in the way. A late block. Here comes Edmonds the other way. Gives a dumb lap. Here's Redinger. Open three from the wing. No good. Yeah, she hasn't been making having them fall tonight, but if she keeps taking that shot, she'll be okay. She's been able to make that pass. And just under Stoltz there. And Winamax is going to take a timeout. Val, you and I were talking about Piper Link, you know, in the show and, and you know, if she can contribute. I, I really like what I've seen out of her. Mm -hmm. So that was a full. We'll take one as well. She's, Vidak. Definitely, she's definitely a pretty good athlete. Yes. Back in just a moment here on RTC TV4. Back here at Phil Waybright Gymnasium out of the timeout. 27 16. Dragons with the lead. Winamax hanging in there, though, Val. Girls basketball update North White leads cast in 10 7, end of the first quarter. Of course, Winamax hosts cast in tomorrow night. Football update, Andrea and scored on their first drive and they lead LaVille 7-0. Okay. They're in regionals now, right? Sim yeah, Football. regional. Yeah. Yeah. Football's the score with the oblong ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And we were talking about Oh, the that. other football. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The, the other football. <laughs> Not the football. American football, Dylan. Dunlap to give the... Edmonds, she'll go to her right, nothing there. Tip to Stoltz. Redinger find Ed, finds Edmonds inside, no good. And looks like we're going to have it over the back. Is that a zone that I see Winnemac running? Was that a 2-3 zone? Looked like it. Wow. You don't see that very often from the Coach Croft team. Again, you can't complain about the shot there. Lizzie in the lane, yeah. that's, uh, you'll take that shot all the time. 
And off to Smith, no good. Redinger will take it herself, gives off to Stoltz. No good, back iron on the mid-range jumper. That one's gonna be out on Edmonds. You don't want that shot if you're Argus. Yeah, you can yeah it's a little too shot. early. That's a quick outside shot. I, that's something you should be doing if you're down by 11, not, not if you're up by 11. Gerhardt looking, nothing happening. Finds Campbell, top of the key. And it's two just inside the line, no good. Stalts the rebound. Nice screen by Ella Gerhardt, but couldn't connect on the shot. Miller, corner three. Couldn't get it. Go. Again, I, I don't think you want that shot either. Yeah. Up, when you're up in the third quarter, especially, you want to try to drain as much clock as possible, minimize possessions. Yeah. Croft, top of the key. She'll fake to her left. Nothing there. But it was close to a double dribble. Good pass to the baseline, blocked by Edmonds. And here comes Dunlap the other way in transition. She's going to slow things down, though, set up the offense. Edmonds inside. Kicks out Miller. That's her shot. Got it to go, her second three of the night. You know, and that was the same shot that she just took, but they had it inside and then he worked yep. it back outside. That was just so much better ball movement by the Dragons. Here's Campbell for three, can't answer. Rebound to Edmonds, she'll take it herself. Nice defense by Maggie Smith going over the screen. Edmonds trying to put on a move. Gets fouled inside on the double. And that's on Croft, that's four. It is. I think so it, it, Adinger's going to check in for Croft. I think if you're Coach Jennings, it's kind of like the Hoosiers thing, you know, not necessarily four passes, but you don't have a you don't have a shot until the ball gets into Lizzie Edmonds and then yeah. you go from there. Yeah, get her a touch. That doesn't mean yeah. she has to shoot it, just get her a right. touch. Right. Dear Hart, left wing, finds out of here. She'll go to her right past Stoltz. Contact shot, no good. Trying to muscle through the contact, a little too strong and the shot goes off the glass. Nice help there by Redinger on defense. Edmonds uh, might have had the turnaround jumper, but didn't take it. Miller looking around, good screen by Edmonds to free up space. Edmonds inside, no good. Stoltz the putback, good. 16 point lead for the Dragons now, 32 16, with 39 left in the third. Bella just seems stronger, able to finish closer to the basket. It's going to be the Dragons' fifth foul, Redinger's second. And it's Campbell at the stripe for two now. Campbell's first is good. Saw a few early misses from the free throw line early on, and they haven't really missed. I don't think, have they missed a free throw this half yet? Uh, yeah, I they have. Piper, okay. Piper Link is one for two. Okay. Yeah. And second one goes as well. And then actually, Kingsley Croft's second one was nullified because she went over the line. Uh, yeah, that's right. Edmonds turnaround jumper again, good. Oh, that was kind of a no, 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 yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you thought they were going to take it down for the final shot, but I don't think any time that Lizzie Edmonds takes a shot, probably Coach Jennings is, is not going to be upset. Yeah. She's she's a smart kid. She's going to take the good shot. And now Winamax bogged down, running out of time, and they didn't get a shot off. Good defense from the Dragons there, really closing anything close to the basket. 
after three here at Phil Waybright Gymnasium. The Argus Dragons lead 34-18 over the Winnemac Warriors. Take a break and come back with fourth quarter action here from Argus in just a moment on RTC TV4. Welcome back here after three. The Dragons lead 34-18 and pretty balanced scoring. Obviously, Lizzie Edmonds led the way with six, but Redinger had four. Stoltz had two, and, and Carly Miller had three there in the third quarter. They outscored the Winnemac Warriors 15-9 in the third. And now, what will Coach Croft do defensively? What adjustments might he make here? Because Argus was getting the shots they wanted for the most part. I mean, especially, I mean, Lizzie was getting open looks in the lane, and that's something you really don't want. And also, do you, do you turn up the pressure here? I, even though Winnemac's a good defensive team, I don't think I don't know if they're necessarily a full court defensive team. And even if Lizzie gets doubled inside, you still have yeah. that inside out that they showed earlier, and they can hit shots from the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and there we, yeah, there we see it—a little trap, a little trapping, and it really worked. Got a turnover out of it. Zom, good defense at the base, at the baseline. Good. Miller got a hand in, couldn't come away with it. Link shot, no good. Gearhart fakes. Gives to Link. Adding her to Link now. Drives to her right. Smith back to Link. Link a three from the corner, it's good. And I believe that's their first three of the night. Yes, it is. Link gets the basket, but Maggie Smith with a great effort on an offensive rebound. She deserves some credit for that, too. Edmonds fights inside for the offensive rebound. Gets fouled. Basket won't go. She'll go for two. We got Piper Link with 10 points for the Warriors tonight. Edmonds first is good. <laughs> Second one off the right iron. And here comes Croft. She's got four fouls so far. Still, I mean, it is the fourth quarter, but you still want to be a little careful with 6.30 still left. Travel. Deep three. Got it oh. to go, but she traveled. I think that was a good call. She, she shuffled that left foot as she was trying to get her feet set. Unfortunate since she didn't train it. Redinger gives to Miller just inside the line. Still got it to go. Nice job. They handled the trap there really well. That's a that's an, the sign of an experienced team. They saw what Winnemac was trying to do to them, and they made the adjustment. Miller and Edmonds, good double there, making them kick back out. Same deep shot. Can she get it? Nope. That one's off. Here's Adinger. Croft given inside to Campbell. Stolen by Redinger. And here's Redinger and Stoltz in transition. I'd like to see Redinger challenge that. That's her strong side. And here's Miller. Gives to Stoltz. Stoltz back to Miller for three on the wing. No good. Fighting is Redinger for the rebound. And if that's on Croft, that's five. I think it is. She can. Sam had position on her. Kingsley falls out with 524 to go. Dunlap's gonna check back in for Zom. And Maggie Smith is going to check in for Kingsley Croft. Yeah. 
And we have a Winamac timeout as the Dragons were going to inbound. It's going to be a full timeout. 30? Oh, 30. Never mind. Fake Stood back up. Any score updates there, Val? I, I haven't heard. How's Valley doing? Have you seen any updates on that score with uh, Warsaw and Tiffany Valley girls playing over at uh, Tiffany Valley? Not yet. Uh, yeah. they, there was a 7.45 start. Okay. So they're probably uh, just underway. Football, Carroll and North Judson tied 0-0 into the first quarter. No. Girls basketball, South Central leads Triton 54-25 wow. in the third quarter. That is a really is good this year. Yeah. Andre in 14 to nothing over Laville football. Mich football Mishawaka Marion leads Hanover Central 7 to nothing into the first quarter. Girls basketball Columbia City beat Whitco 58 to 26. North White leads Cast in 25 to 13 at halftime in girls basketball. I told you North White would be a good team. Yeah. Dunlap gives to Edmonds off the glass and in. It's now an 18 point lead for the Dragon. That was really good ball movement by the Dragons. It was consistent doubles from Winnemac and they handled it really well. Argus just doesn't make bad passes. That's going to be a reach from Edmonds. You, know, you, you were talking about South Central. It's almost like Argus with the, with the Dunlaps. They've had a Tolman on the team in South Central, it seems like forever. Yeah. There's, there's one still playing there. Foul was on Miller. That was Argus's last was foul Miller. to give. Okay. This is a really solid Argus lineup. They just, like you said, they just don't make mistakes. Nice job by Stoltz getting a deflection there. Obviously, Winnemac wants to be moving much faster than this. They've already taken, what, about 30 seconds off the off the clock in this possession, down by 18. That's not a, not a good sign. Thought about taking it. Here's Gearhart, goes inside, draws a foul. Yeah, how about up the uh, defensive effort that they've had on Ella Gearhart? She had 16 the other night against Westville, and this is... Uh, her chance here, she's only got two, and those are both free throws in the first half. First one's good. Second one drops as well. And Winnemac with tight pressure now. Stoltz gives to Miller to Edmonds. Strip from behind her, but Dragons end up with it. Here's Dunlap from the top of the key. Got it. Nice shot by Emma, just kind of trailing the play. Link to Gearhart, looks for a shot, got it. And she hasn't gotten that shot very much tonight. Dragons really closed in on her tonight. Take a look at that shot by Dunlap there. Nice ball movement again, getting out of the pressure, finding an open Dunlap yeah. for three. 30 second. LaVille 14 to nothing on Andrean. Mention that. Excuse me, Andrean 14 to nothing on LaVille, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought you said 7 to nothing earlier. Yeah. I was like, wait, how did that? Yeah. Yeah. Drake Bowen is going to Notre Dame as to play linebacker. He scored both touchdowns for Andrean so far. I see Amanda Fajardo's down in the street closed. Hopefully she can be back soon. I know she hurt an ankle. Coach uh, Jennings really praised her.
She said she worked really hard at her game during the off season. It's kind of closest thing to a backup post, but again, with Lizzie, hopefully you don't need to use a backup very often. Finds Bollenbacher up the baseline, three on two. They can't convert. Stultz comes away with the rebound, though, and they're going to call a foul under the basket. And both teams now in the one and one. It's going to be Adinger's first. Stoltz's first free throw is good. Stoltz's second also good. And it's a 19 point lead for the Dragons. Campbell finds Gearhart. She'll drive to her right. Lane's closed off by Dunlap. Just those little things I know on it. defense. But they're, they're, Argus is really attentive on defense. And yeah, Allen's stolen. Edmonds ends up with it. Bowenbacher fakes. She'll go to her left now. Nothing there. Dunlap gives to Edmonds. Looks for Stoltz. Dunlap, no look past the Stoltz, rips it away. Going to be a jump ball, and Winamax going to have possession. So now Campbell gives to Gearhart. It's Smith back to Campbell. Link on the high elbow, reading her guarding. Active hands. Gearhart goes to her right, blocked from behind by Edmonds. Really not giving her many opportunities to score tonight. She does that what once or twice every game, where you think you you think you're by her, but you're not. Yeah. <laughs> A little too much body on the trap. And it's going to be on Campbell, her third. That'll send Renninger to the line for one in the bonus. Gearhart, Smith, and Campbell are going to come out of the game. Renninger's first off back iron. Edmonds tries to avoid the foul. Link drives. Shot's not going to count. It's on the floor. It's going to be on Redinger. Wings first free throws good. She'll get a bonus. Wings second off the right iron. Stoltz fighting for it. Comes away with it. Redinger to Stoltz, going to try to drain some of that clock. Edmonds, top of the key, gives to Bullenbacher. Here's Redinger in the corner. Gives back to Bullenbacher, and now fakes a dumb lap, goes back to Redinger.
Well, Dylan, Argus started 0 and 7 last year. They're about to be 3 and 1. They're about to be 3 and 1. And Bethany Christian, Triton, and Winnemac were all teams Argus lost to last year. Yeah. And I mean, even with that slow start they had last season, they still went out and had a great second half of the season, I thought. I mean, after the next six games, they were, or the next eight games, they were six and eight. Or some, something like that. They evened out their record really well, yeah. getting close to late in the season. And then after that, they went to face Triton in the sectional final, came up a little short, but... I mean, still an overall great recovery of a season. Yeah, I mean, that would now that would have been your Hoosier story to start 0-7 yeah, oh and, oh and, and then win a sectional. It came this close to happening. Definitely. First one from Adinger's off the right iron. So that date we were talking about that I didn't know was December 9th, Dylan. That's when Argus will travel to Rochester, the, Gen okay. the Jennings Bowl, so to speak. The Jennings Bowl, part two. Yeah. Yeah, so Lizzie will have to face Rochester's post players that night, and then the next night they play Culver Academy at CGA, and that'll be uh, Edmonds versus Bowen. Okay. So put back bucket by Bolenbacher. Taylor Bowen just signed with Lipscomb the other day, so she's going okay. D1. She had 22 points and 14 rebounds against Valley the other night. And she is a legit 6'2". I mean... I didn't look. Is that one here or at CGA? At CGA. At CGA. That would be a fun one to do. Done, now, done some games at CGA, but their gym is just so small. It's, it's kind of hard. The house that Trey Galloway built. <laughs> and as clock expires, the Dragons come away with the win. It's a 19-point margin, 46-29. As the Dragons start their season three and one. Which I, I think this might have been the best overall game. The Dragons have probably played on both sides of the ball. Well, definitely. I, now, this is the first time I've seen them in person this yeah. year, but... Yeah, the, the offensive execution, I was really impressed with that. Uh, I, I was really impressed with, yeah, there were a couple of maybe ill-advised shots where they took some outside shots early in the possession. Yeah. But for the most part, I thought they passed the ball really well. And just got, they got good looks, and they got the right people shooting the right shots. Back here at Phil Waybright Gymnasium, where the Argus Dragons win 46-27 over the Winnemac Warriors. And value mentioned it, obviously going 0 and 7 to start the season last year. They've won three games against teams that beat them last year. But you know, impressive wins. You know, Bethany Christian at Triton and against a really good uh, Winnemac team here tonight. I mean, really, if you're Coach Jennings, you got to feel really good about your start. Whatever Winnemac seemed to throw at Argus defensively, and we we've talked about how hard Winnemac plays defensively. Yeah. Argus seemed to just they kind of took a deep breath. They kind of read the situation, and then they made the adjustment. Yeah. And, and that was a good sign. They made good passes, or at least they didn't make bad passes. Yeah. But what do we say? Don't throw the. Don't think about throwing the ball to your teammate. Just throw the ball away from the defense. Right. They did that. The ball handling is really good. Emma Dunlap looks like uh, she's just more and more comfortable as a point guard. And defensively, I mean, all the, they were just... They're just really alert defensively. Like they were, all those like backside rotations. Because Winnemac sets a ton of picks. Yeah. They set a ton of screens. But Argus just kind of, they did what they had to do. I mean, the, the the backside rotations were there. They fought through the, they fought, fought through the screens. And I, I'm sure from Winnemac's standpoint, they just didn't make shots. I'm sure, you know, Campbell and Croft, they could be, they could be deadly from the outside when they're on. But you know. Uh, but well, and yeah, that's the thing too. If Croft gets off to a better start than she did, obviously, yeah. you know, not making any threes, that could change the whole dynamic of the game. But you mm -hmm. know, it is what it is, and kind of, kind of like what we talked about with Borges from Pioneer. You know, 
Lizzie's kind of that eraser, right? If you make a mistake yeah. and you, you miss uh, play a girl, she can always come in. And you saw that a couple times where she got that block from behind with some, yeah. those long arms. Right. For Winamac to win this, I, first of all, I, Piper Link looks like she's just much improved, and yeah. she's just playing with a lot more confidence and poise out there. She can finish around the basket, even in, even in traffic. Uh, but, again, Winamac's going to need. So she can be maybe the third scorer to go along with Gearhart and Croft, or maybe even the, when things are really going well, the fourth scorer to go along with Gearhart, Croft, and Campbell. But uh, really, other than, other than Link, they... You know, they couldn't get a whole lot going offensively. And even with two years left still for her, she's still only a sophomore. We can only see that going uphill from here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Again, I, I talked with Coach Crop before the season started. He talked about hyperlink and her improvement, and she's just, you know, she can. You know, if anything, he talked about it like, I know she can score. Like, I, you know, we're just trying to get her to, you know, just develop as a player, be better defensively. And Yeah. Well, you got to. You want to run through the uh, the stats for us, Val? Okay, we'll this is very unofficial here. Yeah, you're going off of. He's looking at my stats, so that definitely means there's possibility for some mistakes. Okay, I had Link with 13, Gearhart six, Campbell four, Croft three, and Addinger one for Winnemac. For Argus, Edmonds had 15, Stoltz 10. Miller had eight, Redinger had six, Dunlap had five, and uh, Sophie Bolenbach had a bucket at the end of the game. She had two. But again, Lizzie with 15 points. I don't know how many rebounds she had, but probably close to a double-double again. And then add in the three or four block shots she gives you. I mean, she was not only the best leading scorer in tonight's game, but she was probably the best defensive player on the floor as well. Well, uh... Dylan, I, hopefully we can get back up here and get another game and, yeah. or, or two before you get going. But if we don't see you, best of luck. You guys, uh, you said you start at Bremen. Is yep. that is that the Wednesday before Thanksgiving as well? Uh, I think that one's the day before the girls' game. I think that's the 22nd we play. Okay. So, yeah, the, the boys' team. And, you know, like we, we talked about before the game, you know, Dylan and I a little bit. We're, we're really excited. You know, obviously a new coach and a new style, but uh, a lot of returning players back. That senior class is just really deep with with Dylan and, and Redinger and uh, Stoltz. And who am I missing? Uh, Mike. Mike Richard. Richard. Yeah. Caden Brady, if he is available. And then, and you know, you throw in J.J., why would obviously. Caden not, why would Caden not be available? He's been in between, like, a little bit of injuries in practice right mm -hmm. now. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, I interviewed, I, I talked with Caden after the soccer game. I was like, whoa, Caden's like, he's gotten big. Yeah. I mean, he's strong. Yeah. I, I think a lot of those kids have really, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're finally starting to catch up to Dylan a little bit as far as the, the strength that yeah. it goes. All right. Well, anything else, guys? That's all I have. Uh, yeah, I'm good. just, uh, yeah, looking forward to to heading to Winnemac tomorrow night and see how these Lady Warriors bounce back against Caston. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing Argus down the road. I mean, uh, you know, interesting game at North Judson coming up on Tuesday. Yeah, at North Judson. So tomorrow afternoon we'll have Rochester versus Northwood at Rochester. That's a noon JV start. And then in the evening, you said Winnemac hosts Caston. Valley hosts Northwestern. So we've seen Northwestern last week. We're going to see them again, uh, or this week actually. I keep, I don't know where, where time goes sometimes. And then Culver hosting Westfield tomorrow. So it should be a, a fun day of basketball tomorrow. And thanks again, Dylan, for, for joining us. And if we don't see you, you know, best of luck to, as you guys get your season started as well. So we're going to say goodnight here from Argus. The Dragons win it. Final score 46-27 over the Winnemac Warriors. Thanks for tuning in. We'll uh, talk to you later.